It regulates energy in their body equals mc squared radiates away mass. Then it gets smaller, 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 and smaller until it reaches what's known as the Planck scale. Nobody really knows what happens at that point. There are about three suggestions, and this has to do with the information that the black hole swallows as it's formed. Is it lost, as Hawking originally suggested, and as I believe? Is it retrieved somehow in this final pop? I call this a pop because it's not very big. If one of these things happened in this room, it would be extremely unpleasant for a lot of us. If it happens out in space, you barely notice it. Um, certainly a trivial thing from an astrophysical point of view, certainly from a cosmological point of view. Uh, doesn't matter how big the black hole was to begin with, it seems to end with a pop about the same size. Um, there's a simple information paradox which worries lots of people. Shortly I'm going to say why I think I believe it's something we lost. Lots of physicists don't like that, and then have other suggestions. But I think it's it's probably lost. Okay, but what happens? That means that nothing is left except radiation. Well, you could argue about some other things, but let me just say nothing is left. <laughs> almost entirely except radiation. I see, the idea that I'm just about to describe is something which came to me because I'm worrying about how boring the universe is as far as astronomical, cosmological observations you can tell us. We've got this thing that just expands and expands, all the matter just drifts away, all falls into black holes. These black holes just sit there. Can you imagine anything more boring than waiting Goodness knows how 10 to the 64 years or 10 to the 90 years for that blast of thing finally to disappear. It's about as boring as you can possibly imagine. But it seemed to me, you know, okay, it could be just boring, of course, but it did seem to me it's not that boring. Because who's going to be around at that time? Not us. No, we need but photons. And photons, as I just explained, they just zip along the light curve, and the first tick with the clock, they don't even notice it. Eternity is absolutely no big deal to a photon, it's weak, there it is. So as far as a photon produced a very considerable amount of energy in the form of gravitational radiation, waves, ripples in space-time, gravity wave, gravitational waves. And these leave their mark on this boundary surface between the old eon and the new. And this has the effect, the light temperature goes to zero, but the, what's called a normal derivative, that is across the back surface, is not over zero, and it causes density variations in the material in the next phase. The picture I have is something like this. Imagine a pond, and it's raining. Every drop of rain causes a ripple which goes up. Imagine the rain stops, and you see, you look at the thing, and you see something that looks pretty random. If you're clever enough, or, and you can imagine doing some very delicate analysis, you could work out that this random looking pattern is actually built up out of circular ripples caused by the raindrops. That's just the sort of situation you do. You have these black holes spiraling into each other, these are like the raindrops, and they produce these ripples out here, and they combine together to produce the density variations that one sees in the microwave background. Well, maybe that's right, maybe it isn't. Somebody's sort of going to look. Uh, the other thing is, what is this matter that's sitting on the other side? Well, that has to be something which comes about from the oh, where's all my transparency from the uh, conformal factor which translates from one eon to the next. And for some reason, here we are. Yeah. I think I'll just say the words. I have a few formulae written down, and uh, for some reason I picked the transparency to the formula and vanished the site. There we go. I, I, it, don't worry too much about the formula really, because uh, I'm showing the pictures mainly. But the idea is that the conformal factor which takes you from one eon to the next behaves just like a 
particular kind of masses, a particular kind of field, which uh, I'm claiming is the dark matter. I, I think I should have known the details of this. If you look at the formulae and you see what the transformation is, rules from, from one side to the other, you find that it actually incredibly fit the equations of this kind of mass that's explicit. This is the end of the momentum tensor. This is the fuel equation satisfied by as a mass term, which I'm supposed to is to be ignored at the beginning, and then we see these two formulas match exactly, which is a rather remarkable fact. So what I'm saying is that the dark matter, which is the main constituent, is, is far, there's far more dark matter in the universe matter that we otherwise don't know what it is, but it seems to be many much more than the ordinary kind of material that we know about. And the picture here is that each time as you go from one year to the next, it creates by this conformal transformation a whole slew of this dark matter. And it's that that has this um, density variations. The, the one remaining point, which I have to try and find, and for some reason I transferences of John Walker Busk. Here we are. Again, uh, slightly technical transparency. But the question is about the second law of thermodynamics. You see, what you seem to find is that the information in the remote future of one eon matches exactly with the information in the next Big Bang. And if it matches, how is it that you get a second law of thermodynamics? What's happened to all the phase space volume? Well, what's happened to the phase space volume, according to this description, and um, what seems to me to be necessary in many other descriptions, if you look at it carefully, it's not quite essential to this, I mean, it's an essential part of this description, but I think it's a problem that other people would have too. And that is that this black hole evaporation that I talked about really does have to lose information. It was, after all, Hawking's original argument, which did show that you have to have loss, and if that's the case, every time the black hole goes pop, it carries with it regions of phase space. Now the thing is, that you might say over here, well, how is the entropy over here increasing? In other words, suddenly I'm saying the phase space volume suddenly gets smaller. It's only getting smaller because that phase space region is built up from degrees of freedom here, together with those in some black hole way over there, which suddenly gone pop. So the volume has incredibly just suddenly got smaller because the information has disappeared in that black hole and the, the phase space has suddenly got smaller. We don't feel anything that other black holes are disappearing in some remote distance, but the volume does get smaller. And it's a check on this whole scheme to see whether the amount of phase space loss that the black holes are disappearing will lead to actually does exactly compensate for the increase in entropy that happens throughout the history of the universe. It's one of many checks this scheme would have to be subject to, and most of these haven't been looked at in any detail this yet, so it's something for the future. At least it's a theory which could be shot down if any of these things don't work, so that makes it a scientific theory no matter how crazy it looks. Thank you very much. And 